In this video, I will show you how to make this physics simulation in Blender. As always, it is going to be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so start off by downloading this free .blend file, which you can find in the description. And then we're going to hide the jet, and then press Shift A, and add a cube. And then we're going to add two ray modifiers. The first one is going to be for x-axis, and then let's set the count to 15. And then next, we need to add another one, so press Shift D to duplicate, and then I'll set the same value for the y-axis. And as you can see, we have a bunch of cubes on the x and y-axis. And before we continue, we can save the project, give it a name and save it where we want, on the computer. And then next, we need to apply these two modifiers. And then in the uh, physics settings, we can enable rigid body physics. And then under dynamics, I'm going to set the damping translation to 0.35 and the rotation to 0.6, which makes them move a bit more naturally, in my opinion. And then next, we can press tab for edit mode, and then P to separate by loose parts, so that all of these cubes get separated from each other and become individual objects. And then set origin and origin to geometry so that they all get their own origin. Okay, and then next press number one for front view, and then press Control Shift S and create a new save, and then press Shift D, set, then two, and then Shift R to repeat the previous actions. And the reason why we added the set axis later is to avoid long waiting times and crashes when we separate the cubes and add the physics. And then let's create another save. As you can see, when we select them individually, they all have the same physics. And then we can add a plane, Shift A, press S to scale. This is of course going to be the floor. And then we need to move it downwards, so press G, set, then minus one to put it right below the cubes. And then let's add passive rigid body physics to the plane because it's not going to move at all. And then set the collision shape to mesh. And then under surface response, we can increase the friction slightly so that the cubes slide a bit less. And then under the rigid body world settings, we can bake the simulation. So the cache, and then click bake. And you can cancel it after a few minutes. And we just need to make sure that the cubes are working properly. And as you can see, they are. Next, we need to unhide the jet. And then select it. And then we're going to animate it. So press G to grab. And then press number 7 for a top view. And G to grab. And then you can press S to scale to make it larger. And then before we add the keyframes, we need to add the physics. So uh, enable the rigid body physics. And then we're going to set the type to passive and animated. And then set the shape to mesh and then set the friction to one. And then to move it, we can press G, then X to move it on the X axis, and then press I to keyframe the location. And then we can move forward in time to one of the later frames. So uh, let's set it to 250. And then press G, then X to move it on the X axis. Okay, and then you can press I to keyframe the new location, and then T in the timeline to make the animation linear, so that the jet keeps the same speed throughout the whole animation. And then next, in order to calculate everything, we need to go to the rigid body world settings, delete the bake, and then bake the whole thing again. 
Now, after half an hour to an hour of baking, you will have the simulation. And it's going to look something like this. And then the next step is to set up the camera and the lighting and so on. So uh, I'm going to create another save. And then you can press Control Alt Numpad Zero to set the camera to the current point of view. And then under View, we can uh, lock the camera to view so that the camera follows your point of view. And I'll try to make the uh, jet start outside the frame of the camera and then leave the frame of the camera later. You can also keyframe the location and rotation of the camera and uh, change the perspective of the uh, camera. So something like this, so that we can see where the cubes end up, for example. The animation can look even cooler if you use multiple cameras and some uh, different camera methods, but I'm not going to cover that in uh, this tutorial. But I have a lot of tutorials on that topic on my channel. Okay. And then next, we can go into rendered view. And now we can set up the uh, lighting and the materials. So let's start off by selecting the sun. And I press R twice to rotate the sun freely. And then let's add a material for the floor. So I'll select the floor. And then I'm going to give it a dark color and use the glossy shader. Okay, and then next, I'm going to select the cubes. So let's select one of the cubes first. And then we can use a uh, glossy shader. I'm going to make it quite rough and give it a blue color. And then next, we need to copy this material to the rest of the cubes. So select the rest of the cubes. Then pad one for front view. B to box select, to object. And then link slash transfer data. And then link the materials. And then in rendered view, you can now see that they are all blue. Okay, and then next, I'm going to increase the strength of the sun rotate the sun slightly and in general just play around with the different colors and materials and uh, see what you like and then once you're done playing around with the different materials and colors we can save one more time and then go in to the output settings and i'm going to uh, use 200 percent which means 4k you can just set it to 100 percent if you want to uh, use 1080p for the render and then I'm going to create a new folder on my computer for the rendered images which then you later turn into a uh, .mp4 file which I have a tutorial on on my channel and then you can go to render and then render animation and that's it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and uh, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more Blender content and Blender simulation tutorials.